after studying this module you would be capable of understanding the meaning and significance of commercial banking in India. Learn about the services facilitated by the commercial banks in the Indian financial system. Learning about the kinds of loans and advances granted by the commercial banks which include secured and unsecured loan. Understanding the regulatory structure of the commercial banking institutions. In this module, we will discuss about the commercial banks. Commercial banks are the oldest, biggest and fastest growing financial intermediary in India. Like other financial institutions, they perform a critical function of facilitating the flow of funds from surplus units to deficit units. They do it by accepting deposits from surplus units and then transferring these deposited funds to deficit units by making loans or purchasing debt securities. The profit of commercial banks is attained by subtracting the interest rate taken from depositors from the interest rate given to lenders. They also charge commission or charge for services provided by it. So, a commercial bank is a financial intermediary which receives deposits of money from the public and advances them with a vision to make profits. However, what differentiates them from other business functions, financial as well as manufacturing is that they also have to pay considerable attention to balancing profitability with liquidity. This is because banks transact in other people's money and a substantial part of it is repaid on demand. Other than this, banks are also expected to fulfill obligations like social welfare, social justice, promotion of regional balance in development, etc. Let us now discuss about the significance of commercial banks in India. The banking system forms the core of financial sector of an economy. The function of commercial banks is predominantly important for underdeveloped country. Through mobilization of wealth and their best allocation, commercial banks harbinger a significant role in the growth and development progression of underdeveloped countries. By offering smart saving schemes and ensuring safety of deposits, commercial banks encourage willingness to save among the people. By reaching out to the population of the rural areas, they help convert idle savings into effective one. They also improve the distribution of wealth by lending money to priority sector of the economy. These banks offer a meeting ground for the savers and investors. The Indian banking arrangement has a very extensive reach and deep existence in metropolis, cities, semi-urban areas and the remotest corners of the rural areas with its vast number of branches. It is one of the biggest banking systems in the world. They have engaged in creating a significant role in development of the Indian economy by financing economic activities of different sectors. Moving on to the functions of a commercial bank. It accepts deposits which are of various types like current, savings, recurring and fixed deposits. It provides credit in numerous forms such as loans and advances, discounting of bills and investment in open market securities. It collects checks, drafts, bills and other instruments for its depositors. It provides remittances facilities 
through drafts and telegraphic transfers. It renders investment services such as underwriter and banker for new issue of securities to the public. It extends a numerous agency services such purchase and sale of foreign exchange, acceptance of tax payments, electricity bills, etc. It delivers facility like traveler checks, gift checks and safe deposit vaults to its customers. We shall now discuss about types of loans provided by commercial banks. First is secured loans. A secured loan is a loan in which a borrower is asked to pledge assets to the lender as security or collateral for the loan. These categories of loans are backed by an asset like a house, car, etc. The lender can take possession of the asset when you default on the loan. They can trade the asset and use the earnings to pay off the loan. If the property is not able to fetch enough money to completely recover the loan, the borrower will be responsible for paying the difference. Second, unsecured loans. Unsecured loans are monetary loans that are not secured against the borrower's assets. These categories of loans involve no guarantee. Interest rates for these categories of loans tend to be higher because the risk involved from the point of view of the lender is higher. Bank overdraft is the most common type of unsecured loan. Let us now understand the classification of commercial banks in India. Commercial banks in India can be classified in a variety of ways. Scheduled and non-scheduled banks. A scheduled banks are those types of banks which are included in the second schedule of the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. Certain conditions are required to be eligible for this type of bank. For example, a bank must be a corporation and not a partnership or a single owner firm. Scheduled banks enjoy certain provisions like borrowings from the RBI. In return, they have to meet certain obligations of RBI such as keeping a part of their cash reserves with the RBI. Next, Indian and foreign banks. Indian banks are those which are incorporated in India and have their head offices in India. Foreign banks are establishments in foreign countries with their head offices outside India. Next, public sector and private sector. The State Bank of India, SBI, and other nationalized banks are public sector banks. In these banks, central government is mandated to hold a minimum percentage of shareholding, which is 51% in case of nationalized banks and 55% in case of the SBI are public sector banks. The others are private sector banks. Moving on to legal framework for banking sector in India. Banking is a central government subject. As per entry 45 of list first, union list of the seventh schedule of the constitution of India. The legal framework for banking in India is provided by a set of enactments, mainly the Banking Regulations Act 1949 and the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. No entity can function as a bank in India without obtaining a license from Reserve Bank of India under Banking Regulations Act 1949. In the year 2003, RBI issued licenses to IDFC and Bandhan Financial Services to set up new banks in India. Various types of activities which a bank may undertake, sensible requirements are provided under this act. Next is laws related to banking operations. Apart 
from the Banking Regulation Act 1949, which governs all the scheduled commercial banks, there are various legislations governing different bank groups. The nationalized banks are administered by two acts, viz. Banking Companies Acquisition and Transfer of Undertakings Act 1970 and Banking Companies Acquisition and Transfer of Undertakings Act 1980. Next is Laws Related to Debt Recovery and Enforcement of Security. In the area of dispute settlement, the Legal Services Authority Act 1987 has conferred statutory basis on the Lok Adalas. People's Court convened by Debt Recovery Tribunals. Debt Recovery Tribunals were set up for expeditious adjudication and recovery of debts due to banks and financial institutions. The securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act 2002 has also been extended to cover cooperative banks. Next are laws related to payment systems. The Payments and Settlement Systems Act 2007 designates the RBI as the authority to regulate payment and settlement systems. Let us now recapitulate what we have learned so far. Commercial banks have confined themselves mainly to short-term financing activities and abstain from supplying long-term financial assistance. But with the increasing integration of various segments of financial markets, the distinction between banks and other financial intermediaries are getting increasingly blurred. This is anticipated to increase the efficiency in the resource allocation process. But they also increase the risk of contagion from one segment to another with implications for overall financial stability. This will call for appropriate policy responses during times of crisis. A commercial bank is a financial intermediary which takes deposits of money from the public and lends them with a view to make profits. Through mobilization of resources and their better distribution, commercial banks play an important role in the development process of underdeveloped countries. Commercial banks in India can be classified in a variety of ways, scheduled and non-scheduled banks, Indian and foreign banks, and public sector and private sector banks. Banking is a central government subject as per entry 45 of list first union list of the seventh schedule of the constitution of India. The legal framework for banking in India is provided by Banking Regulations Act 1949 and the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. With the increasing integration of various segments of financial markets, the distinction between banks and other financial intermediaries are getting increasingly blurred. Thank you.